Typically, we are told, don't imagine failure, push failure out of your mind, only focus on success, you know, fake it till you make it, or it's a phrase that I absolutely hate, uh, frankly, because it's not even clear what that means. And it's not even clear what the ethical form of that is. I think it means continue despite any anxiety or fear that things won't work out. But if you look at the literature, the scientific literature, what the Balsetis lab and other labs have shown is that there's a near doubling, near doubling in the probability of reaching one's goal if you focus routinely on foreshadowing failure. You think about the ways in which things could fail if you take action A or you take action B and instead, therefore, you take action C. You're supposed to think about how things could fail if you don't get up and run each morning if your goal is, say, a fitness goal. So let's use that as an example because even though I realize people are in pursuit of many things, not just fitness, fitness goals and physical goals are a very concrete thing that we can all get on the same page about because they're related to actions. Let's say somebody sets a goal of running five miles four times a week minimum and as many as seven, four times a week minimum before 8 a.m. Okay, in a previous podcast on habits, I talked about the benefits of not necessarily setting specific times that one will do things, but setting time blocks that one will do things. So you say before 8 a.m., you're gonna run five miles and that's gonna happen up to seven days a week. Okay, one version of this would be, okay, sit back in a chair and think about how great you're gonna feel and look if you're doing this every day, how your health is going to improve, how everything's going to, your blood markers of lipids, et cetera, are going to improve. Okay, fine. That's the visualization goal of visualizing the endpoint. Turns out that is far less effective and maybe even counterproductive compared to thinking about what's gonna happen if you don't do this the negative health outcomes that are going to occur, the disappointment you're going to have in yourself, the fact that you're going to wait until 7.30, that's not long enough for many people to run five miles. You go to put it on your shoes, it's going to be pouring rain or even hailing or snowing outside. And now you're not going outside unless you're somebody who's particularly motivated to do that. Okay, so foreshadowing failure turns out to be the best way to motivate toward goal pursuit. In fact, As I mentioned before, there's a near doubling in the likelihood that people will reach goals of any kind when they're constantly thinking about how bad it's going to be if they fail. If we think back to the neural circuit associated with assessing value in our goal pursuits, this makes perfect sense. The amygdala, that center of the brain that's involved in anxiety and fear and worry, well, the amygdala is one of the four core components of our goal setting and goal pursuit circuitry. And there's no bypassing that. There is no one listening to this or watching this whose amygdala is not involved in their goal setting and goal pursuit behavior. And so while I'd love to be able to tell you that all you should think about is rainbows and puppies and all the wonderful rewarding things that are gonna happen when you achieve your goals, the truth is you should be thinking mainly about how bad it's really going to get if you don't do it, how disappointing yourself you're gonna feel, how it will negatively impact you, if not in the immediate term, in the long term, if indeed your goal is to reach your goal. So I want to emphasize that I'm not interested in encouraging people to flagellate themselves. I'm encouraging people to achieve their goals. And it turns out the best way to do that is by foreshadowing failure. And the more specific you can get by writing down or thinking about or talking about how bad it will be if you don't achieve your goals, the more likely you are to achieve those goals. Part of the reason for that almost certainly has to do with increases in systolic blood pressure and increases in readiness in your system when you imagine failure. The brain and body are much better at moving away from fearful things than towards things we want. I wish I could tell you that wasn't the case, but there is a true asymmetry in the way we are built. In fact, the brain and body can engage in what's called one trial learning. When something bad happens, we eat a food that makes us sick, we have an interaction with a person or place that we really don't like. It only takes one trial to really one event, one time to reorient or rewire our neural circuitry so that we have a bias toward moving away from that thing in the future. When things go well, unfortunately, that doesn't often occur. If things go really, really well, it might orient our brain and body toward wanting more of that thing and we'll have neural circuitry changes that will lead us to engage in that particular behavior or interaction again. But it is never as effective as these avoidance circuits. So again, foreshadow failure. If you're going to visualize in a positive way, do that at the very beginning of some goal pursuit. Maybe intermittently every once in a while, you imagine the big win of you know scoring perfect on an exam or winning the championship or the great relationship. But most of the time, if you wanna be effective, you should be focusing on avoiding failure and you should be really clear about what those failures would look like